Welcome back. Another SQL tutorial from SQL Maestros. Today I am going to talk about a simple T-SQL thing and a little tricky. Tricky until you understand the logical flow. Let's straight away jump into the demo. We are using SQL Maestros dummy database here and there are two tables, subscribers and subscriptions. Now in this query, we are doing a simple join between the two tables, but note that there is a left outer join and the joining condition is we want a common attribute, which is subscriber ID. Now in this join condition, of course, we are joining on subscriber ID, but we also say that the plan ID should be equal to two. So for this table, which is subscriptions, I'm saying for all the subscriptions where plan ID is equal to two. So I want the join condition and also plan ID equals to two. Note that there is no where clause. Now, if I select this and execute the query, you have the join happening and you get the output. But the only surprising thing here is you are also getting plan IDs where the plan ID is null. So of course you get where plan ID is two, but you're also getting the ones where it is null. Interesting. You're not getting plan IDs with one, three, four, five, so on and so forth, but you get the null, the ones that are non matching. Now, of course, your joining criteria clearly said that it's an and operator and you clearly said that you want where the plan ID should be uh, two, but you get these records. So why is this happening? This is happening because the way a query is logically processed and in simple words, what happens is you should have ideally put if the requirement was that you wanted to filter out all the plan IDs and you only wanted plan ID two, you should have put this in the where clause in the logical flow. The where clause gets processed after the join condition, but we don't have the where clause here. So why is this all happening? So let's first understand that in the logical flow left outer join can be considered as first an inner join and then the non matching rows getting added to the virtual table. So think about this left outer join as a two step process. So first the matching records between subscribers and subscriptions tables are extracted with this condition. And that is the place where only plans with plan ID two are added. But because you said left outer join, the non matching records get added on top of the matching rows. And that's why you land up getting some of these records, which do not have a plan ID because this is a left outer join. And these are the non matching rows that that get added to the output of that temporary inner join. So the solution to this, and of course, this is not a bug, which many might think you know, initially when people get introduced to T SQL, they might think, oh, what's going on? So of course, this is not a bug. This is how uh, the logical flow, the logical query processing steps are. So what next we can filter at the where clause. This would be the right thing to do if the requirement was to only get the records with plan ID two. we have the same left outer join. The only thing is now plan ID equals to two has been moved from the join condition into the where clause. So we say where SS dot plan ID is equal to two and let's go and select this and execute. And now you will get exactly what you probably would have expected, which is matching records and plan ID is equal to two. So this is tricky until we understand this, but the whole idea is where clause now is a step in the logical flow, which gets executed after the join takes place. So first the, uh, the inputs, the join inputs are is processed and then comes the where clause. So that's a filtering uh, step here. And of course, in the logical flow, there's another opportunity for you to filter, which is when you use group by clause and you can apply in having clause. So in, in simple words, you have three opportunities to filter the join condition, the where clause, and then the having clause. Hope this was fun. If you like the content, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon so that you're notified on new videos. Most importantly, visit sequelmaestros.com. There's a lot of SQL learning resources out there, video courses, master classes, lab kits, ebooks, blogs, hands on labs, and a lot more. Follow us on Twitter at the rate SQL Maestros and myself a underscore Bunsel. Last but not the least, do subscribe to our newsletters. See you soon in another video. Goodbye.